I see a ton of mistakes and I get a lot of cars from other shops who don't know how to do a compression leak down test properly. First of all, you need to do both tests, com dry compression, wet compression, and then also leak down test. You need to do all three. If you just do a compression test, throw those results out the window. I don't care. And the thing is, if you think about the engine as an air pump for a compression test, you are building compression. So I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot. If you have problems like leaking valve, leaking head gasket, crack in the head, because you are building compression, those dry compression numbers, even the wet compression numbers, a lot of times will hide the leaking issues that will you know, reduce engine efficiency. Basically a leak down test will show you existing issues with the engine that a compression test will not tell you. That's why you need to do all three tests. All right, so here's our setup. It's good to do compression test at least a few times on each cylinder. Got my gauge set up inside the spark plug tube. Throttle's gotta be held open, so there's probably a better way to do this, but uh, it's my car, so I just put a screwdriver, make sure the throttle blade's open. Um, you can also have your assistant just hold the pedal down all the way. I have both fuel and ignition disabled. So in this case, my distributor's unplugged. Um, back in the trunk, I have my fuel pump disconnected because you don't want fuel to be spraying inside, diluting your oil, doing a whole bunch of bad stuff while you do your compression test. Got my battery charger hooked up. You want battery at full voltage at all the time because if you have a like low voltage battery or like another problem with the car, for example, like a bad start that's drawing too much, you're gonna get erroneous, uh, you're gonna get the wrong compression numbers if your starter or your batteries has a problem with it. So yeah, pretty much eight cranks, read it, do another eight cranks, see what the, what the numbers look like and then we'll call it good. So a few things I'll listen for, is it cranking too fast? Is it kind of a weak crank? It actually felt like really good compression, or at least sounded like it, but let's take a look. 150, 60, 70, 80, 180, and then some change, we'll call that 183. 183, yeah, cylinder four, 183. We're gonna reset it, do it one more time. Yeah, just about there. 183 both times. This confirms uh, that I got the you know that I got the reading, uh, same reading two times. That confirms this is accurate. So 183 for cylinder four. I'm gonna write that down. We'll go to cylinder three. cylinder two yeah the whole time I'm doing this I'm listening uh, does it skip a crank does it crank too fast you know is it like you know is there one fast crank in between I'm also monitoring the uh, battery voltage battery voltage should stay around like 12.5 um, <clears throat> yeah common mix misconception 12 12 volts period that's like a dead battery so yeah, usually 12.5, 12.7 is what you want. Last cylinder, cylinder number one. Pray for me, you guys. All right. All right. 180, we'll call that 183. Cool. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm actually going to skip the white compression test and I'll tell you when I would do a wet compression test let's you know all our cylinders are just about 180 let's say I had one low one that was maybe like you know a uh, marginal cylinder might be like 160 and I'd say hmm what's wrong with that guy or you know even worse like let's say all of them are 180 but you have one cylinder that's like really bad like a hundred 
you're gonna use a wet compression test to verify do I have a problem in my engine block or do I have a problem somewhere in the head? So what are some block problems, right? Like worn cylinder walls, worn piston rings, worn pistons. Do I have broken rings? Um, that could be possible too. Um, so a wet compression test, you are gonna squirt like a little bit, let's just call it like a teaspoon of oil into the cylinder, do your compression test again. What that oil is going to do is help seal up the piston and the rings. So if your numbers go up, let's say at 100 PSI cylinder, did my wet compression test and the numbers went up to like, let's just call it 160. So it gained 60 PSI. Something's probably wrong with the block or something inside the block. On the other hand, let's say I did my wet compression test and the numbers didn't change. So 100 PSI, squirt some oil, did my compression test, no change. Maybe I got like 110. I don't even consider 10 PSI a change. Something's wrong with my head. Something's wrong in the head. So like I have a leaking valve, leaking head gasket. That's why right now we're gonna do our leak down test. Um, I know 180 across all cylinders, that should be like good, right? I wanna make a thousand percent sure. So we're gonna do our leak down test. Make sure that we absolutely don't have a problem with something like our valves, our cooling system, um, anything like that. All right, so before we start our leak down test, I am going to muscle this oil cap open. Jeez, JSP, you make such a good oil cap. Come on, man. That was a two-handed, that was a two-handed one. Despite these muscles, that was a two-handed. <laughs> I'm also gonna disconnect my battery charger. We don't need the battery charger for this anymore. I'm also going to open my radiator cap. And so, <clears throat> pretty much during a leak down test, we're gonna shove 100 PSI of air through each cylinder. And if there's a leak, it's gonna come out somewhere, right? Whether my exhaust, my oil filler, my intake, or even my radiator, or sometimes out another cylinder. So in a nutshell, we're gonna shove 100 PSI through each cylinder and see where the leak comes out. All right, we got our leak down tester set up, connected to our compressed air. I got this once again on cylinder number four. So I am going to put 90 PSI of compressed air in this engine and if there's a leak it should show on this percentage gauge ideally zero percent is what you want I know this says green but ideally every engine zero percent is what you want so yeah why don't we get started to be TDC on the compression stroke before you put air through the cylinder but I'll show you what I'll show you a trick that works especially well if you have a uh, engine where it's hard to get to the cylinder, it's kind of, you know, what comes to mind, especially like a boxer engine, where you can't like stick something in there and then watch it rise up and down to see where TDC is. 100 PSI. All right. Cool. We're going to crank this up to 100 PSI. And then turn our crank. Force our crank down and just about in the middle of set, so about 5%. And then we're, usually you have an assistant, you hear where the air is coming from. I can hear it from the oil filler, I don't hear it from the intake. All right, so let's go over what we just did. Set this to 100 PSI. No need to find exactly TDC. <clears throat> Just crank over the crank pulley until it gets hard and then at a certain point it's gonna stop. You're gonna hold it there. You're gonna watch the gauge needle move and this will tell you the percentage leak. In this case for cylinder number four, we got that little line right there which is just about five PSI leak. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, yeah. Just about 5% leak. At this point, we want to know where that leak is coming from, so we're going to listen to a few areas, right? So, if you see the coolant bubbling in the radiator, that means you have a head gasket leak or the block or the end, the block or the head's cracked. If you hear it out the intake, that means the intake valves are leaking. If you hear it out the tailpipe, usually I have someone stand back there and listen to the tailpipe. That if it, you hear air coming out of the tailpipe, that means the exhaust valves are leaking. And then in this case, our 5% leak, I could hear all of it through this oil filler, which 
is normal, right? The the piston and the rings aren't going to seal, are not going to seal 100% to the cylinder walls. No matter what, even 0% leak, you're still going to hear some air out of this guy. And so this means leak through the crankcase. So my 5% leak is through the pistons, rings, or walls. This is going to be most accurate when the engine is warm, but because you know stuff like the rings and everything has to seal up in the and things expand when they're hot but this is fine I'm perfectly happy with a 5% leak with um, this age of engine and I know you know again one more time 30 or 40 track days and autocrosses on this engine 5% leak is uh, perfectly fine so why don't we move on to the rest of the cylinders and cross our fingers for good luck all right cool cylinder three do 100 psi you gotta hurry up my comp you know my compressor is not that big, so we gotta hurry up. We're getting close. I can feel it when it gets hard. Hard to turn, that means we're getting close. I'm gonna shove this guy down. Less than 5%, we'll call that 4%. And then once again, out of our oil filter, or oil filler. All right, cylinder two. Pump 100. We're gonna crank that soldier boy. Perfect, zero percent, exactly what I want to see. Well, it's zero. But again, zero percent, and I can still hear air coming out of the oil filler. That's that's just how it's gonna be. But yeah, zero percent, perfect, exactly what I want. All right, last one, number one. Wish me luck. Yeah, always clockwise. Don't ever turn the crank backwards unless it's a Honda engine. All right, 0%. Zero. zero. All right, so let's check out our readings. Our compression numbers, our cylinders, and also our leak down numbers. Any engine importer, any shop, you should get three sets of numbers every time. I don't give an F. Every single time, compression leak down, you should get three sets of numbers. The dry compression test, the wet compression test, and then the leak down. Uh, one more time, we did not do the wet compression test because these numbers look good. But on a customer car, if they if they pay for a compression and leak down test, I will absolutely do all three tests. So leak down numbers, <clears throat> another common problem I see with other shops or engine importers. They'll have the leak down percent. So in this case, this is great, right? Zero, zero, four, five. Some service manuals will have a spec on what allowable percentage leak is acceptable. Um, this has a spec too. Don't look at this because this is like a general spec. You really want the factory service manual spec for both dry and wet compression and then also the leak down numbers. And then one more thing, variation between cylinders, right? So for some manufacturers, if you have, for example, seven PSI variants between cylinders, that would actually fail the compression test. So. In a nutshell, all these would need to be within 7 PSI of each other. A common problem I see when leak down tests are documented, they'll have the percentage, but they won't say where the, the leak is heard from, right? So again, we have a few places. The oil filler, which means the crankcase has an issue. The intake valves, or I'm sorry, the intake, which means the intake valves have an issue, or the exhaust valve, or the the exhaust or the, the muffler, which means the exhaust valves have an issue. Oh, there's actually two more I just thought of right now. If the radiator is bubbling, that means either the head gasket, the block, or the head have an issue. 
And then the very last one, let's say I leak it down through three and I hear the air come out at a four. Very common, the head gasket is blown between three and four. So four potential places where it should be documented where this percentage leak is coming out of.